Section 12.1, First Prophetic Confirmation There is another possible witness to this timeline in Scripture. It is found in Daniel. Daniel was among the first of those from the kingdom of Judah who were taken to Babylon. He rose to a high position in Babylon during the exile, much like Joseph in Egypt and Mordecai in the kingdom of the Medes and Persians. Daniel was given several chapters of end-time prophecy from an angel. Parts of the prophecies were explained to him, but some of it he did not understand. The reason for this is that the prophecy was for the end times and not meant to be understood in Daniel's day. The angel told him that the words are closed up and sealed until the end times. Daniel 12.9 The prophecy from Daniel, which is relevant to the timeline, occurred in the first year of King Darius and was therefore around 520 or 521 BC. It is the prophecy of the time, times, and a half. There are two interesting things about these times. Firstly, the word is the same one that is used in Leviticus 23 when Yahweh speaks of his appointed times, the Feast of Yahweh. The second is that there are no numbers given for these times. 3,500 years is half of 7,000. If you use the number 1,000, which becomes 1,000 times 1 plus 1,000 times 2 plus 1,000 times a half, it equals 3,500 years. I did not pick this number at random. The word time is the same one that means appointed times or set times. It simply made sense to me to link these times to the feasts. Therefore, I set the time as one millennial feast. 3,500 is exactly half of 7,000, which is the total number of years for the Sabbath millennium theory. Do you remember the Hebrew word for seven? Sheba. It comes from the root Sheba for completion or oath. This is very interesting because in the very verse that speaks of a time times and a half in Daniel 12:7, the word Sheba is used when the angel held up his right hand and swore by him who lives forever. It is this word, Shaba, that is translated as swore, the root of the Hebrew word for seven. And at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great ruler who stands for the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation until that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine as the brightness of the sky, and those who turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood another two, the one on this side and the one on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen on the waters of the river, Until when shall be the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, who was on the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when they have made an end of scattering the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I did not understand. Then I said, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the end time. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Daniel 12, 1-10 Table 12.1 First Prophetic Confirmation Times Here is our 7,000 year chart with the seven millennial days in blue. I simply divided the top part of the timeline in green in half with 3,500 years on one side, or a time times and a half, and 3,500 years on the other side, or a time times and a half, which total 7,000 years, which is the total for the millennial day theory. I don't need to be a prophecy scholar to see that the beginning of the passage must refer to the end times, as it speaks of the final judgment and resurrection. Then there is an image of two angels, one on either side of a river, and a third angel who is standing on the waters of the river. He is the angel who is revealing the prophecy to Daniel. One of the two bank angels asks the river angel when there will be an end to these wonders, referring to the end times events just mentioned. The angel on the water swears 
that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when they have made an end of scattering the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Table 12.2 The Vision as Daniel Saw It Here is my interpretation. You may take it for whatever you think it's worth. If the river represents the flow of time and or revelation from God, then the angel standing on the waters receives those revelations and gives answers regarding the end times. The angels on either bank of the river represent two equal halves of time, with 3,500 years on each side. One side would begin at creation in 3,977 BC and end in 478 BC. The other side continues from 477 BC and then ends at the final judgment, which occurs after the thousand year reign of the Messiah on earth. This makes for 7,000 years of biblical history in total. Daniel is standing on one bank of the river in the vision he sees. In the picture to the right, I have placed Daniel standing on the first side of the river because this prophecy is given about 45 years before the center of time. At the time of this prophecy, Daniel was an old man and had lived in Babylon for about 86 years. Daniel asked the angel about the end of these prophesied events, but the angel said, You go on to the end, for you shall rest and stand in your lot at the end of days. Daniel 12.13 It sounds like the angel told Daniel that he would not live to see these things fulfilled, or perhaps that his death would mark the center of time. An End of Scattering the Holy People One of the bank angels asks the river angel, Until when shall be the end of these wonders? And the angel on the water swore that, It shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when they have made an end of scattering the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. The angel said that the end would come when there was an end of scattering the power of the holy people. To what does this refer? If we look on the original timeline, Table 12.1, 3,500 years past the center of time, a time, times, and a half, takes us to the very end of our world. In Revelation 20, after 7,000 years of biblical history, at the end of the millennial reign of the Messiah, the enemies of the holy people will gather against Jerusalem and surround her. It says that fire will come down from heaven and devour these enemies. Then the final judgment will occur. The new heaven and earth will be created, and the new Jerusalem will come down from heaven. Best of all, God himself will become king and temple for the holy people, and they will be with him forever. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 and 3. And I saw no temple in it, the New Jerusalem, for the Lord God Almighty is its temple, even the Lamb. And the city had no need of the sun nor of the moon, that they might shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it, and its lamp is the Lamb. Revelation 21, 22, and 23. While some believe that an end of scattering the power of the holy people means the people will be completely scattered and powerless, there is another way to look at it. It could be that this passage describes the very end, when the power of the holy people will never be scattered again. Literally, when the scattering ends, they will all be together in one place with their God for eternity.